Hey guys, Firebox here. I decided to make a follow-up from my previous cleric guide. This is going to be more directed towards complete beginner players. I'm going to go pretty much play by play. I'm going to tell you exactly what I recommend doing, what perks to take, what level to do it at, what merchants to go to, what stuff to actually bring into your dungeon dwelling, etc. So I hope you find this helpful. Let's get started. All right, so before you even go into your dungeon, you need to do two things. One, go to your perk and skill. I highly recommend getting the Blunt Weapon Mastery. 10% damage is huge, and you're going to be using Blunt Weapons throughout your playthrough. So highly recommend to just take this skill. At level 5, you're going to want to get Advanced Healer, which is going to increase your base magic healing by 5, which is a really big number, and I would 100% recommend getting this first. The second most important one is going to be protection from evil, which is going to reduce the harmful effects by 50%. And the 15, this is actually a toss-up. I have been running Perseverance because it significantly helps you in PvE, and a lot of stuff will barely do any damage. But the alternative is to run Brewmaster once you hit 15 and have the perk space as a way to significantly increase your strength when you're getting pushed by certain melee classes such as barbarian which is a really big problem for this class especially if they catch you off guard judgment is going to be my personal pick for skill use it does immediate damage after a short period of time it reduces their movement speed and quite honestly cleric doesn't really have ranged options I just, I highly recommend just taking this skill. I do not think the other skills are worth taking. You don't need Holy Purification. That's not going to help you against other players. You don't want Divine Protection. That is absolutely not going to help. It's only four seconds. It's not long enough. And Smite, you would have to hit somebody at least three times to make up for the damage you're missing on Judgment, which is a free hit and seven seconds. It's not that easy to hit someone three times in seven seconds by the time you hit the skill. Because they could just back up the moment you hit smite. And now you're getting zero damage instead of 25. And then you're going to go to spells. And you're going to be using five spells. You have exactly the cost limit to actually do this. You're going to use lesser heal. Divine strike. Protection. Bless. And holy strike. So for PvP... You are going to want to try to pre-buff yourself with Bless, Protection, and Divine Strike. This is going to make you extremely tanky and much stronger. And if you can, if you have the mobility and they don't catch you off guard, you want to try to use Holy Strike before those encounters actually start or when people are trying to run away because this is going to do a little bit of chip damage and will help give you a PvP HP advantage over the other players. As you play, there are two really important merchants that you're going to want to keep track of. The first one is the Alchemist. He is going to alternate between selling the Magic Staff and the Spellbook. The Staffs in this game are trash. They're not good. I don't know if there's been any kind of buffs that I haven't seen, but Spellbooks just are strictly better to my knowledge. When the Alchemist swaps over to Spellbooks, you are going to want to purchase as many as you can that'll fit, as many as you think you're going to need through maybe your deaths. So maybe buy like 10 of them, 8, however many you can actually fit and afford. Because once they swap to Magic Staff, you will be unable to purchase more books until the shop switches, and you can't go to trade to level 10. And you don't want to be stuck going into encounters with a magic staff. After your first raid, you're also going to want to go in with at least basic healing and protection pots. It's true, you are a cleric. You will not necessarily need it as much, but especially if you're new, having that extra healing that will not make you waste your main heals is really important. Obviously, your first raid, you can't do it, but after that and you start to get a little bit of gold, it's going to be really important to do. The second merchant you're going to want to keep track of is the Weaponsmith. He is going to alternate purchasable weapons. And the big things you're looking for is either a flanged mace 
or a morning star he will randomly sell these weapons and they are going to be significant upgrades because this starter mace is really bad you do not want this weapon longer than you have to keep it so the moment you can get a white or a green you should be buying it and replacing this the buckler is also a really bad shield you can use it for pve it's going to be a little harder because it's so small but for pvp it's basically useless really most shields aren't that good except for maybe rangers but you definitely do not want to be using the buckler in pvp range now we're going to go ahead and enter the goblin caves this is going to be the gameplay portion our priority we are not going to be trying to pvp unless we have to or it's favorable for us such as you know maybe they're blocking a blue portal or something along those lines our goal is to go in loot where we can loot and get out just to get our starter gold so we can start purchasing our better low quality maces and spell books so let's get started all right let's get right into it so priority is going to be to clear pve and get to exactly where we need to go i usually don't team in caves however for this very first run if people want to team i'm actually perfectly fine with it we're just going to kind of get to where we need to go this is a pretty rare spawn i don't get too often we will actually just go through here my goal if you've seen my last video is going to be to my thought uh it's going to be to hit the main treasure points that we saw in my last video so the underground bookshelves the uh, bases where the spiders spawn and any kind of other bases now they did like just today like i haven't even played with it yet they buffed cleric resourcefulness i don't really know how much of a buff this is but apparently it's faster also i don't usually even take bad equipment but for this case okay so we actually have people on the other side of this door okay so we don't really want to fight however we are fully buffed he's close Oh, all right. We're good. We're good. Oh, man. Oh, that was close. We have such bad gear. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, he had pretty bad gear, too. It was slightly better than ours, just because he had more armor, but, man. Okay. So, we are good. Unfortunately, he did not have a spell book, but we did get our first kill of the run. Probably should have actually used our holy skill, but got kind of caught up in the moment there with being fully buffed. Also, he was a cleric, and I didn't know if he had those skills either. Honestly, the problem is the staff, it's so slow. Look how long it takes to cast holy strike. That's long. That is not something that I want to be trying to close quarters like kite people with it just it isn't fast enough okay so these bases are really good for here so let's try to get this before anyone else comes by because i don't really want to fight anyone else okay it did take that little hit there would have been nice if i didn't so i actually i'm gonna actually just use a health potion Alright, so bases are clear. 
the circle is going to be pushing us into the area we're already in. So the bookshelves, unfortunately, are going to be out of the circle. We don't really have the, uh... Without good gear, I just, I really don't want to go to any other places that are going to have high PvP traffic. So we can already see from the top right corner that, how many people have died? Let's see. Seven have died so far, which is actually good for us. So I think it's a 10. It's a 9 or a 10 lobby. So with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and just rest and get some first strikes back. And I'll, I'll skip through this in the video and we'll just keep going. Alright, so we got a little bit of our spells back. We got an uh, extra lesser heal, and we got our other stuff completely good. So our goal at this point, I know it's not a lot of loot, but I'm telling you, you don't need a lot of loot for your very first extraction. You really just want to get a little bit of money baseline just to be able to buy uh, stuff from the store. So at this point, we're going to just loot on our way towards the portal. Preferably not fight anybody at this point, but... If we have to, we will. I did hear a blue portal while we were resting, but I do not know exactly where it is. Okay, there's actually a ranger there. So, I'm not even going to try to fight this ranger with the gear that we have. I'm telling you, taking PvP fights with this trash starter gear for Cleric is not at all fun. You can get away with it with some of the other fighter classes, but it is really tough for Cleric. I do hear a blue portal pretty close by. Okay, so we have that guy there. I'm not going to fight him. Our goal is just to get out of here at this point. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll hit, hit, that guy will take the portal, that's perfectly fine. Again, I'm not, I'm not really too interested in trying to get into a bunch. And honestly, again, this is what I recommend you do, to be completely honest. Uh, at least for your very first run. I don't team a whole lot in, like, my usual runs, but there's just not really a whole, like, a lot of reason not to. And I guess you can probably, I imagine you can probably tell just from using these spells but, yeah, honestly we're good i'm good with what we have so we had a successful first run we got a kill uh fortunately we actually had a friendly fighter here you know we could have fought him and maybe we kill him but you know our gear's really bad our spell speed's slow why take the chance now we have gold so now we can go back and try to get spell books weapons and just basic healing, which we actually fortunately did get from that cleric as well. So we're already kind of set there. All right, so I've sold everything we got from that run. We ended up with about 100 gold, a couple of clarity pots, potion of protections, and base healing. So in the next run I would do, I would probably bring probably these three health potions here. I would bring three protection pots. And I probably just bring this bandage just to have a little bit of extra. Because Cleric's resourcefulness is so low, I really don't recommend bringing bandages to heal just because it takes so long. But if you find them and you want to use them, that's perfectly fine. Now we would just have to wait for the shop. Obviously, we would just go back into dungeons and just keep playing until the shop changes out. But at this point, 
We have 100 gold, so we could buy spell books and we could buy weapons as they come. We could even buy this base war mall because it's going to be better than this flanged mace. I'm a little torn on the war mall. It's not my favorite weapon, but it's definitely better than just this very weak hitting starter junk weapon. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to see more games on this character, I will gladly go through and actually do a zero to hero and show you that no, you do not just need great gear to play this game. You can start at any point and just play as long as you're good at the game. You can get what you need and snowball into the point where you are the one with the good gear. So thank you for watching. Have a great day. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel too, if you haven't already. Thanks all.